Here we've been having this lovely Easter Sunday and my mother just came in here to make herself a pot of tea on the stove and she said the burner only got lukewarm. So we've got some kind of a lovely electrical problem on our stove here. Now at first I thought that um, the problem had something to do with a bad burner control. You know we've had one burner control, this one for the right front which is a burner that everybody uses around here that one went bad some years back and so I thought well you know we probably lost another one, it's no big deal well it's a little more sinister than that because none of these burners heat up to any appreciable degree. This one gets mildly warm at best you can see there's there's water on it right there and if it was working at all properly it would drive that off to water vapor almost immediately this one only gets lukewarm to the touch these two don't even get hot and neither of the ovens are working which makes me think that we've lost a leg of power coming into this thing somehow. Now, the oven light over there is not working, and neither is that one. So something funny is definitely going on here because the timer's working, and if you turn one of these controls on, you get the surface unit's indicator. So I think the first thing I ought to do now that I've confirmed that you know there's definitely a wide-ranging loss of functionality here, is to head downstairs into the fuse box and see just what might be going on down there. Alright, my apologies for there not being more light back here, but this is not a particularly well lit part of the old house here down in the basement. But the way that electricity is delivered to most American homes is via two hot leads and a neutral. And the neutral serves to balance the amount of voltage available on each lead. If you ever burn your neutral, you'll notice that uh, the heavily loaded side of your home's electrical system, the voltage will drop, where the lightly loaded one, the voltage will skyrocket. And that's how things get damaged and fires get started. So if your neutral ever burns into, you've got to take care of that right away. Now this is an old house, and so it still uses fuses for practically everything, including the range circuit. Now that's over here. And let's see what we got. We have two fuses right there. Now these are big old cartridge style fuses and usually when they fail they tend to fail violently if they've been shorted or heavily overloaded although I've also seen them quietly expire as well but the only way to know for sure if these things don't show any sign of duress the only way to know for sure if anything's wrong is to actually hit them with an ohmmeter now if you're going to work in your home's electricity panel it behooves you to be very, very careful because you can give yourself a nasty shock and hurt, burn, or kill yourself. And you don't want to do any of those things. Now with older electrical service equipment such as this, one thing that you can run into is oxidation on the contact points that cause these contact points to heat up and become unable to deliver the proper rated amount of current. This can also cause the fuse to fail. Now these have been cleaned up at some point in the past, but it looks like they're getting a little oxidized again. So it's probably time to give them a second looking over with a wire brush or something. I'm also going to go ahead and test these with the ohmmeter. Okay, here's the test. We'll take these test leads and put them across each fuse. We'll test this one over here first. And that one's definitely good. Now a fuse that passes a multimeter test won't always work in circuit because sometimes the fuse can become intermittent but it's very very rare that that should happen but as you can see here there's a very low resistance condition across this fuse so that fuse is good let's check the other one and see what happens uh oh that fuse is open loop that fuse has definitely blown so it looks like we're going to be out of a stove tonight I'll just have to get another one of these at the hardware store tomorrow that's really the only drawback to having an electric stove. If you manage to roast the fuse, you're out of luck. And I don't think we've got any more of these 40 amp uh, cartridge style fuses kicking around here, so I'll just have to buy one tomorrow. Now, fuses do sometimes just die of old age. And I think that's what's happened here because these fuses have been in place, as far as I know, ever since we bought this house. And it looks to me like back in the day they cost 69 cents a piece. Who knows when exactly when that was. It's hard to tell. But it'll be interesting to see what a replacement costs this in this day and age from the local hardware store. Just to be perfectly clear about this, the focus of this video is people who either live in the United States or whose home countries follow similar rules to ours. If you live in a country where the electrical system is different 
or you're one of the few people who live in a home that has three phase power coming into it, the information in this video is not necessarily accurate for you and shouldn't be followed for your own safety. Be sure that before you attempt any work on your electrical system that you are acting in such a way that your safety is not jeopardized. Now most everything you can plug in and operate in your home runs off 120 volts AC power here in the US and some other countries. As such, those devices are connected to one hot lead from one leg of power coming into your house, of which there are two, one neutral lead to return power to the system, and one ground that is typically provided for safety purposes. That's why it's very important if you have a device that has a three-pin plug on it, you need to make sure that you never do anything to jeopardize the safety ground. Otherwise, you might have a very, very shocking experience, and no one wants that. However, some bigger devices need more power than can be comfortably supplied over a conventional 120 volt AC circuit. Those devices will typically be hooked up to both legs of the power coming into your home as well as the neutral line. There are a couple reasons for this. First of all, it allows the conductors that are in use to be smaller and more compact and cost less. Secondly, your electrical company typically bills you for the amount of actual power that you use measured in kilowatt hours. A device that's running from a 120 volt circuit will typically consume more power than the same device if it was running from a 240 volt circuit. But you can't just take a 120 volt device and typically just plug it into a 240 volt circuit because unless that device is prepared to deal with the increased supply voltage, you'll end up smoking it. So devices like an electric stove, an air conditioner, or a water heater are almost invariably designed so that they can run from 240 volts AC because it allows the conductors that feed them to be smaller and it also reduces their power draw and in a way saves you money. So here are the old fuses at 69 cents a piece. What did the new ones cost? Just about 10 times as much. $5.95 a piece from the local hardware store. Yay for progress. You know, I wonder if I'd have been working back then if my wage would have gone up at the same rate the price of the fuses has. <laughs> but whatever the case, it's time to go ahead and reinstall them. Now, as you've noticed, our home is serviced by older electrical equipment. But as long as you're mindful of its limitations and you don't overload it and you take care of it, there's nothing that makes that dangerous per se. Now you can see the difference between the one contact that I've cleaned and the others which remain uncleaned so far. Go ahead and shine them up and then hit them with a little oxidation guard. As you can clearly see I've gone ahead and dated these just to see how long my approximately twelve dollars worth of fuses are going to last. So go ahead and plug this back in just like that. Go upstairs and see what the stove's doing. So now with those fuses in place, got the clock set on there, it's about 5.35 in the evening here. Let's see, oven works, other oven works, got our oven lights back, very nice to have those. Let's see if the surface units do what they ought to do. That's a good sound to hear. Something's getting hot. It's so nice to have the stove back in good working condition. You can just kind of see the burner glowing in there. So that's all there was to fixing it.